Hi beautiful people, welcome back. Hope everyone is doing fantastic wherever you are in the world. Well, what I can say for certainty is that this story that I'm going to share with you guys has South Africans mesmerized and had me so intrigued. A very audacious prison escape and a prison cover-up and one could say now a failed escape for freedom. It didn't make headlines here in the States as I thought it would. Maybe an article here or there but nothing major. It was not for dedicated journalists. From a news outlet named Ground Up, this convict could still be at large if it wasn't for them and people in South Africa are singing their praises as they should. Yeah. I will let you know why later in the video of the good work that they did. Before I get into this, my usual disclaimer, please do not take what I say as fact. Feel free to do your own research and come to your own conclusion. All I can say is hold on to your seats, grab a snack, get comfortable because this story will leave you with your jaw on the floor, clutching your pearls and one would swear this is like a Hollywood movie. I will be telling you about a monster named Tabu Besta who is dubbed the Facebook Artpist. Also a trigger warning, there is discussion of R and M. Who is Tabu Besta? He is 37 years old, born June 13, 1986 at Chris Harney Berengwanet Hospital in Soweto, Johannesburg, born to Maria Mabaso, who never registered her newborn at home affairs, but keep that in mind. His mum, Maria, later disclosed that when she was 16 years old, she was awed by a shopkeeper, and that is how Tabu was conceived. At age one, she allowed her son to be raised by his grandparents on the farm because she had to go to work, but she did go and visit him as often as she could. Both Tabu's grandparents were domestic workers. Tabu's petty crime started at a very young age, and I'm talking about four years old. He stole a large sum of money and when approached by his grandfather, he lied and said it was given to him. So his grandfather made him return it. Then at age five, again, he stole money. And like I said, his petty crime started at a very young age. But as the years went by, his crime became more elaborate, complex and deadly. His highest form of education was only standard three, that is grade five. It is reported that Tabu was a small talker and charming. Tabu was dubbed the Facebook artist because he used Facebook to recruit aspiring models and would lure them, he would meet up with them. At hotels, he would art them and rob them of their devices like cell phones or laptops. In 2009, Tabu was arrested and charged with fraud. He falsely posed as a media executive. He spent six months in jail. Get this, in late 2010 and early 2011, he managed to con two different private airlines. He actually conned them out of 900,000 rand worth of services. That is equivalent to about $50,000. He did manage to use our services to get to his destination and then unfortunately it was too late and then they realized that the transfer slips that he did produce, they were fake. He would go by so many different aliases. In that same year, he was apprehended again for fraud and he was convicted. He kept his scam of luring women under the guise that he was this talent scout and things just escalated. This is Nomfundo Untulu. He actually met her when she sold him a brand new BMW in Sandton, Johannesburg. They later started dating and apparently they had this long distance relationship. One weekend, he decided to take her to Cape Town and things went horribly wrong for this young lady. And according to Tabu, they had an argument where he said apparently she was stabbed and he was also stabbed. But get this, he went to the front desk and told them not to disturb his girlfriend because she was resting. Stole her laptop and phone and fled. Finally, he was arrested but in Durban for the or and robbery of two other women. He was finally charged and found guilty. He was interviewed by a forensic psychologist and this is what he had to say about the R and the murder of this young lady. I, I think all these incidents happened, yes, they happened three times differently. But I feel also that I'm not somebody that you should worry about leaving a woman in one room with me that I'll drink. Mm. And I feel that my rapes, especially the rape, because the murder, I feel that it was just a pure, we fight over a knife, somebody gets stabbed in the process. And it was not, if I wanted to stab her, I could have killed her in Durban, I could have killed her the first night we got to Cape Town. So that was not my intentions at all. Mm. If I wanted to kill her, I could have got her into Ntata where there's much less people and got her into a bush BNB there and killed mm. her there. 
So my intentions was never to kill anyone. Mm. My intentions were, with her was straightforward, I liked her. And mm. things got twisted when, whenever they got twisted and we had a fight, the knife got out of hand, she got stabbed, I got stabbed in the process. I tried to stop it. And there's no one in, in this world with two rape cases and there's a knife involved and I'm wanted by cops. If I went to the cops and said we had a fight, she got stabbed in the process, no one was gonna believe me. Mm. That's the first thing because I thought of that. That was the first thing to do, obviously, wake up the owners of the BNB and let them come and then call the cops and get an ambulance there. But I thought if I do that, it's like me saying, okay, I did the murder. Mm. You understand? Um, that is my reason of running from that point. Mm. But not taking this away, I also feel that I am responsible for her death. Because mm. if I did not bring the knife, she would not be dead. Mm. If I did not ask her to come, she would not be dead. So, so let me get this right. He clearly said he knew the right thing was to wake up the owners of the bed and breakfast and let them know what happened. But in turn, he just went to the front desk or the reception and told them not to disturb his girlfriend because she was resting. In May of 2012, Tabu Besta was sentenced to life in prison for the murder of Nomfundo. He started serving his prison sentence at a correctional centre at the Drakenstein Correctional Centre in Paul. He was then transferred to a private correctional service called Mangaung Correctional Centre. This is a maximum security prison. This new prison where he was housed is the second largest private prison in the world called Mangawun Correctional Centre in Bloemfontein, South Africa. It was run by a British security company called G4S, which is a multinational security company. This is one of two private prisons in South Africa. G4S has a 25-year contract with the South African Department of Correctional Services, and this contract is expected to end in 2026. There are so many conflicting stories about how much it cost these correctional centers to actually function and it's reported that the South African government is spending 1 billion rand a year to take care of these inmates at these two private prisons. So whilst in prison he was living his best life. As you can see from this video he was always clean, never ever dressed in the prison attire. He had a laptop, a cell phone and it is reported that his girlfriend would bring him all these fresh clothes and linen. He ground up actually reported that he was running a multi-million rand company from his cell. One would say he ran this prison doing business deals and opening different businesses. In 2018 he had a launch party at the Hilton Hotel in Sandton for a new company that he had started where numerous South African celebrities actually attended and they were told that he could not attend in person because he was on business in New York City. Check out this video. At this point, he was going by the alias of Tom Motsepe, and he had every one of these people at this event fooled because Tom Motsepe was not in New York on business. He was very much behind bars in a maximum security prison, dressed to the nines and conning all these people. They sang happy birthday to him and the way he was grinning, laughing, smiling, whatever you want to say, to me, he was laughing at all those people because he felt that he had them sing to him happy birthday and he had them eating out of the palm of his hand. He actually claimed that he was a subsidiary of 21st Century Fox and this is how he represented himself. Which is absolutely hilarious. Tom Mutsepe is a South African investment strategist a progressive and innovative businessman, he has 
a thought leader, a solid team builder, and has sound knowledge of how to operate a successful global brand. Motsepe has grown into a brand as a strategic specialist when it comes to investment, media corporation, and asset management in mining. He has successfully developed implementation strategies for some of the most renowned corporations across China, Africa, United Emirates, and the United States. He further goes on to say, in 2010, Motsepe joined 21st Century Fox in New York and became a 78% shareholder of 21st Century Group. He relaunched Viacom Investment Company to VIA Investment, where he owns 33.5% shareholding. His media network of companies has grown to the point of owning 12.9% of 20th Century Fox. In, in 2014, he went on to occupy the UBS Financial Services in Switzerland. My goodness, con artists like you don't know. If you want to read this in its entirety, you just got to pause and read. He also tried to host a woman in media conference where, as you can see, he would have guests like Halle Berry, Taraji P. Henson, and these superstars immediately separated themselves from this BS. So from his Twitter account, which is now archived, as you can see, he took a photo of Michael B. Jordan, which he photoshopped his face onto Michael B. Jordan's body. <laughs> this is hilarious. And I mean, it's so obvious to see. He actually had people come and visit him in prison to make business deals with him, to invest in his businesses. This is absolutely mind blowing. And why would you go visit somebody in prison and make business deals? That's a huge red flag in my opinion. It is also alleged that he used to come and go as he pleased. But first, let me introduce you to Dr. Nandipa Magudumana. Yes, you heard that right, doctor. She is his girlfriend, fiance, customary wife, whichever she is claiming to be now. But it has been revealed that she was the facilitator for Mr. Bester and doing all his business for him on the outside. It has also been reported that she was booking long weekends at a five-star hotel where he was being chauffeured by the prison guards from the prison to the hotel where he and Dr. Nandipa would spend romantic long weekends together. All this is happening in South Africa. What in the world is going on? How many people are on his payroll? And how is he getting away with all this? In part two, I will go deeper and let you guys know more about who Dr. Nandipa Magudumana is exactly and how she became involved with Tabu Besta. Now, a few days before the escape, it was said that Tabu seemed very upbeat. In early April, before the escape, he actually did make a request to be moved to another cell because he felt his life was in danger and threats had been made on his life, which that request was initially denied. He was eventually moved to cell 35, which he requested to be moved to, and apparently the reason he requested to be moved to that cell was because the camera could not get proper or good view of that specific cell. It's actually alleged that a day before this whole escape happened, an unofficial van had entered the prison and they actually had a corpse in a chest which they brought into the prison and stored it in the prison refrigerator. And on May 3rd, early hours of the morning, that same cell that Tabu Besta was relocated to, there was smoke coming out of there and it's believed that Tabu Besta had actually taken his own life and had burned to death. The Department of Correctional Services actually confirmed the death of Besta and declared that he died by committing, taking his own life which left a lot of people giving the side eye. Because later on, as you can see, the autopsy report states and reveals that this corpse that was charred beyond recognition was actually shorter than Tabu Besta and did not have smoke in his lungs. Also, according to this autopsy report, the cause of death for this specific corpse was blood force trauma to the head. That was a huge red flag. This picture was taken of Tabu Besta, as you can see, going about his business, handling his business. And also another picture was taken of them, Dr. Nandipa and Tabu Besta, shopping at Woolworths in Santon, Johannesburg. And it doesn't even look like he is bothered. He doesn't seem to be phased at all. It has come to light that a retired justice, when Cameron was actually feeding information to ground up about the escape of 
Tapu Pesta. On March 17, 2023, Ground Up does a huge expose and then on March 25th, 2023, Pesta's escape was confirmed. Now pay attention to the timeline. He faked his death with the help of his fiance, his wife, Dr. Nandipa Magudumana, whatever she calls herself right now, and help from others in May 2022. Now, March of 2023, they decided to confirm his escape. What took them so long? Well, Pesta and his lover, girlfriend, customary wife, as again, I say whatever she wants to be known as, was living a free, wonderful and glorious life on the outside, driving fancy cars, living in the most affluent parts of Johannesburg known as Hyde Park, where they lived in a 12 million rand mansion, paying 44,000 rand a month, hosting fancy parties, networking, conning people with the help of Dr. Nandipa. As it seems, no worries in the world, but thanks to Ground Up for their continuous investigations, they got the ball rolling and these two got wind that they were being hunted for lack of a better word. But eventually their luck ran out and the jig was up. On April 5th, 2023, South African police force raided their home in Hyde Park, but unfortunately they had gone already. They left the home trash and it's reported that they left in such a hurry, he apparently left a hundred thousand rand watch behind. And on April 8th, Tabu Besta was caught and apprehended in a town called Arusha in Tanzania with his partner and accomplice Nandipa Magudumana, he was found with multiple passports. He once again got the best treatment because South Africa had to charter a flight to bring Bester and his accomplice back, which costed the government 1.4 million rand. That's about $80,000. He and Dr. Nandipa returned to South Africa on April 13th where she appeared in court and was charged with aiding and abetting murder violation of bodies and fraud. She later appeared in court with her dad, who was granted bail and apparently he was arrested because he helped her and Dr. Nandipa was not granted bail. She is demanded back into custody until May 3rd. But at Tabu Besta's court appearance, he asked if he could represent himself and the judge denied that. And he did tell his attorney, which the attorney made this request on behalf of him, stating that he hadn't eaten since leaving Tanzania. He was afraid for his life, just taking food from anybody. He also asked the judge if he could get an ID because like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, when he was born, his mom did not register him with Home Affairs. And according to the Minister of Home Affairs, he doesn't exist. And the judge denied that request too. So all these years, he's been operating with a fake ID card. He was going by all these aliases, maybe even impersonating people. So some might say, how did they confirm his identity when he was in Tanzania? So apparently they used fingerprints because of his criminal activities. He did have fingerprints on file with the justice system, like the prison, stuff like that. So his case was remanded till May 16th. It is alleged that he will face new charges of fraud, defeating the ends of justice, escaping and violating a body. So you guys, I will be ending it there for today. Like I said, I'm be coming out with part two because I feel that Dr. Nandipa deserves a full video explaining how she became involved with this monster, what her part was in this whole escape and in my opinion she is no innocent person she did some awful heinous stuff she in my opinion is just as bad as he is and you'll know in part two when you watch it what i mean by saying that the lengths that she went through for this monster and why would she sacrifice all that she had worked so hard for left her husband to go for a monster like this it is insane and i will also go into the other people involved in this escape and whose corpse was used to replace tabo Besta. this is absolutely sickening and people back home are mad wanting answers how did this even happen this is a convicted criminal he had so much influence conned people out of millions from his prison cell managed to escape for nearly a year, as I said. Will we ever even know how many people were involved? I have been so intrigued by the story. I've been keeping up daily. I mean daily 
with all the new information that comes out and like i said on a daily basis i actually followed this young lady she has a channel by the name of lelo and podcast and i think she's absolutely fantastic she holds nothing back she says it like it is she does her research she'll give you her honest opinion if you guys are interested i will leave the link to her channel down below also i will leave the link to ground up the news outlet that actually broke the story wide open if you want to follow them and find out or keep up with the story the link will be down in the description box so let me know you guys what you think about this whole situation for me it's just insanity so thank you so much for your time on your way out please don't forget to like subscribe and the notification bell so you'll be notified each time i upload have a wonderful rest of your day please be safe out there be kind to one another and don't forget make good memories bye guys